everyone, let's talk about some of the basic theoretical properties of a three-port network. So I've drawn here just a, a generic three-port network here. So we've got, this is a one, by the way, a one, two, and a three. And there's some corresponding scattering matrix associated. <clears throat> so when we're constructing a microwave network, there, there are three big properties we usually like to impose or see imposed on a network. First is matching. Um, the second is usually reciprocity. Oops, sorry, that's the reciprocal. And the third condition is lossless. Remember, these are kind of the big three conditions we like to impose on networks to make them interesting and useful. So let's just sort of see what happens when we start inserting these properties into a generic microwave network. Okay, so remember, the definition of the scattering matrix was that uh, you had some vector of positive, or sorry, negative uh, voltages. So that would be signals leaving the network. That was equal to the S matrix multiplied by the uh, positive signals. Okay, so signals coming in and signals coming out, and they were related by this matrix vector equation. So these are the signals leaving, they're equal to the signals entering multiplied by this matrix. So let's start with the matching condition here. What does it mean to say that a microwave network is matched? Well, the short answer is you, you just imagine these, these lines kind of going on to match loads here, and I excite it with, say, a signal here. And I want energy to go into this and come out the other end, but not reflect out at this boundary here. And same for the other two ports. So when we speak of a matched microwave network, what we're basically saying is S11 is equal to S22, which is equal to S33, which is equal to zero. That's what it means to have a matched port. Okay, there's no initial reflection if I excite this port here. I won't have energy bouncing away as my signal kind of propagates through and comes out side. Uh, another common property we always like to talk about is this notion of reciprocal. So remember, reciprocal, reciprocal, <clears throat> that basically just meant if I excite a signal here and something comes out the other two ports, and then I more or less rotate and excite here, I should see the same kind of thing happening out of the other ports there. Okay, so there's no real preferred direction per se in the behavior of a port depending on which node is excited. So what that would manifest out here in this matrix would be something like S12 is equal to S21. And that would imply S13 is equal to S31. And you would also have the condition that S32 is equal to S23. So in other words, this matrix is equal to its own transpose. So if you impose these two conditions simultaneously, Basically, that would imply, so I'm just going to put a little implication here. You get an S matrix, a scattering matrix, where my diagonals are all zeros, and these off diagonals are all equal to each other. So I'll just write something like S12, S12, S13, S23, uh, uh, and this becomes S13, S23. <coughs> So this is what the matrix will look like if it is both matched and reciprocal. So the final question is, what happens if I impose the condition of lossless? So remember, we, we kind of skipped over the proof of this, but we, the, this imposed the condition that S uh, transpose times S conjugate is equal to the identity matrix or the unity matrix, right? So all of my main diagonals had to equal one. <clears throat> So there are a number of interesting things that kind of popped out from this. Uh, so for example, suppose hypothetically, I have a E1 plus, and there's some power coming into this port. There's no reflections here, so there has to be some power leaving here and leaving this node here. And if I add them up, it has to equal the total power that came into this port. Okay, so, so let's just sort of do a quick little derivation of that right now, right? So we say something like, E2 minus is equal to E1 plus times S12, just by definition from this matrix, which of course will by reciprocity implies V1 plus is equal to S21. These are, these are the same thing here. 
And we also have the condition that V3 minus is equal to V1 plus times S13, which will equal V1 plus times S31. So this is just falling out of the definition of matched and reciprocal here. So I'm now going to conserve energy, okay? So I'm going to impose conservation of energy, okay? So I'm going to, if I'm going to calculate the power of these signals here, I will find that V2 minus the magnitude of that squared, that's the power in that signal, is going to equal uh, the magnitude of V1 squared times the magnitude of S21 squared, like so. And then we'll also have the condition that magnitude of V3 minus squared is equal to the magnitude of V1 squared times S31 squared, or S13. <clears throat> so this is the power in this incident signal. This is the fraction of that power that gets split into node 3. And I'm now going to have to require essentially that V1 plus squared is equal to the magnitude of V2 minus squared plus magnitude of V3 minus squared. So that's the power entering into node one. This is the power leaving at node two and the power leaving at node three, and they have to equal each other if I'm going to conserve energy. So what you do is you substitute in these expressions and you just pick hypothetically, you can normalize them or just suppose hypothetically this is normalized to a value of one. But you very quickly find something like this, S21 squared plus the magnitude of S31 squared is equal to one. Okay, so this is an expression of conservation of energy that if I excited this node here, the power leaving these nodes must add up to equal my total incident power. And if I then repeat the argument over say this node here and these, uh, these other guys over here, you'll find something like the magnitude of S12 squared uh, plus the magnitude of S to three squared is equal to one. And then we'll also have the condition that the magnitude of S13 squared plus magnitude of S23 squared is equal to one. <clears throat> okay, so whichever port I excite, power in has to equal power out. And the, you, you think the story would end here, uh, but it actually doesn't. Because of this condition here, my conservation of power, across all the nodes. So this, this is kind of if I excite one and something comes out the other two. But you could also ask kind of what happens if I excite two at once, right? So if I excite these two, there's gonna be these superpositions of powers coming out of the other ports and they all have to kind of obey conservation of energy as well. So we didn't really do the derivation per se, but mathematically that will manifest as the summation from K, let's see, this is what the book points out. K equals one, to three, because it's a three port network, you get S K I times S K J conjugate has to equal zero, Oops, excuse me. This summation has to be satisfied for I not equal to, uh, sorry, I not equal to J like that. Okay, so when I equals J, they basically have to add up to give you one, which is this statement here, and all these cross terms in these matrices have to add up to give you zero. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll just write out an example here. You'll notice I, I'm gonna pick uh, I equals one and J equals two. So this implies S11 times S12 conjugate plus S21, S22 conjugate plus S 3, 1, S, uh, 3, 2 conjugate is equal to zero. <clears throat> so again, remember this property here just came out of this property here, which has to be satisfied for a lossless network. However, we also impose the condition of matching, okay? So what that implies is this S11 here is zero, and this S22 is also zero, which means this, this product here has to be zero. So let's write that out over here. S31, S32 conjugate is equal to <clears throat> zero. So if you then repeat the same argument for the other rows of this matrix, you'll get the following. S, uh, let's see, S23 times S12, we'll put a conjugate here is equal to zero, and then I'll get a S12 conjugate, or sorry, S doesn't matter the order, S13 is also equal to zero. 
Okay, so in other words, my lossless condition requires all of these things to be satisfied simultaneously. Okay, so if I have a matched and a reciprocal and a lossless network, I have to satisfy these conditions all over here, and I have to satisfy those conditions, and this is my matrix. And it seems like, okay, nothing particularly special is happening, except you have to look at this. In order for this product to be true, one of these terms has to be zero. And then in order for this product to be true, at least one of these terms has to be zero. And for this to be true, at least one of those terms has to be zero. So what you do is you look at the, the triplet here. I've got S13, comma, S12, and then S23. And remember, the, the order of the indices doesn't matter. Two out of these three must be zero. Okay, so I can either have zero and zero, not zero, or I can have zero, zero, not zero, or zero, zero, and not zero, and so on. Okay, so let's just suppose hypothetically, I'm gonna set take u be zero and u be zero. That will satisfy these conditions. But if s13 and s23 are zero, that means zero plus zero equals one. So that is bad. That is a contradiction. Contradiction, <laughs> okay. Bad, bad, bad. So that leads us to a very important property of three-port networks. No three-port network can simultaneously be matched, reciprocal, and lossless. It is simply not possible to do that. And bear in mind, this isn't like just a violation of the laws of physics per se, it's a violation of the definition of these terms, right? If I assume this linear relationship between my input voltages and my output voltages, then it logically follows that these three conditions cannot all simultaneously be satisfied. Okay, so if someone comes to you and says, I have a three-port network, and it is both matched and reciprocal and lossless, you can say, no, sir, you do not. You are a liar. That is the logical equivalent of saying you just created a square circle or a married bachelor. <laughs> it's not even physically impossible. It's logically not possible because the definition of these terms in this system do not all, they're not all compatible with each other, okay? So the rule is, you can have matched at all three ports, you can have reciprocal, recipro, oops, cull, sorry, <laughs> and then you have lossless. Pick any two, okay? You have that and that, but not that, say. Or I can have this and this, but not that, and so on, all right? So this is a fundamental property of a three-port network. Three-port network. You can have match, you can have reciprocal, you can have lossless, but not all at once. You, have, you can only have two of those things satisfied simultaneously. 